Hello everybody, welcome to a Halloween video game review where we will be playing in Sanitarium. The video game, not the place. Nobody wants to play in a sanitarium. That's where all the crazy people are. But if you're talking about playing the sanitarium game, now that's a different story because it's a really neat psychological horror point and click game that I highly recommend, ironically, for the story. Whoa, Wizwar, I thought stories wasn't something you cared about. Well, there are exceptions and circumstances, and point and click games are those. Because without a story, the gameplay doesn't have a purpose. Kind of like the Ace Attorney games where if you took out the story, there is no gameplay because it only works if you have both elements. So with that said, Sanitarium is a point and click game that I really enjoy playing, even if there are some flaws and annoyances I have with it, which I'll explain later. You play a character named Max, no spoilers, who's been through a car accident, turned into a mummy face, and got amnesia which thankfully has no dark descents because fuck motion sickness and babysitting a little bitch. But ironically, you do descend into the mind of Max as he tries to remember who he is and discovering the truth of what's happening around him. The story in Sanitarium is really good, or at least very engaging. I played it all the way through wanting to know more of the plot, with an ending I was mostly satisfied with, and that gets a pretty good thumbs up from me, especially when I get a laugh from how the dialogue is read sometimes. Slice and dice, baby. All together, you son of a bitch. That's not an experiment. It's torture! Oh yeah, this game is also fully voice acted and it's great to listen to. I certainly found it very entertaining and emotional at points. The game and the story has Max going through chapters switching between realities in the real world and the psychological reality where Max explores the depths of his mind and memories as he adventures in various weird places, solving puzzles to the next chapter. Also sounds like something a Silent Hill game would have done. Speaking of puzzles, the puzzles in this game are relatively simple to solve, and you can't die, so there's no game over from, say, experimenting. The sanitarium puzzles kind of remind me of the humongous entertainment puzzles, which I'm quite fond of because it's what got me into point and click games. So there's no bizarre moon logic in this game that would have you look up a walkthrough, or at least it shouldn't because I did look up a walkthrough early on and felt kind of ashamed because the puzzle wasn't that difficult to solve in hindsight. It was like getting the easiest question on who wants to be a millionaire and having to use a lifeline. I felt pretty dumb for it. The difficulty of the puzzles is like a mountain. Pretty easy in the beginning, gets difficult in the middle, and drops back down to easy, which just disappointed me because I was expecting some epic finale puzzle to end us off on. But no, you get a puzzle that's basically that one room in the last level of Goof Troops on Super Nintendo. Now I say the puzzles are easy, but only if you actually have all the information at hand because in the later parts of the game I got stuck at certain puzzles not due to them being difficult, but for the reason that I just did not have all the information I needed to understand how to solve the puzzle. Like not realizing I didn't fully explore the map in the chapter thoroughly enough because one part of it looked inaccessible. Either that or the puzzle is some sort of alien tech or lost artifact that I just didn't know how to work and if I did the puzzle is astronomically simple. So I find the puzzles to be above average with a few highlights. The puzzles didn't bore me but it didn't always impress me because in some chapters you don't even really have puzzles that would be considered puzzles but more like obstacles that intrude on the story like find a key to open this lock to get something else to open another lock. On the note of being average, I really hate to say this because I do think Sanitarium is a good game and worth recommending, but the later psychological chapters after Chapter 2 just feel weak, like there's some lack of creativity. They feel more sci-fi and grounded unlike in Chapter 2 where it had a flow of creative area design and story behind it. The game claims to be a psychological horror, but I felt very little of that in the game. Like it exists, but I don't really feel it half the time. And for sure it's not scary, so don't worry about that. The horror elements in this game feel like it's something that Tim Burton would have designed. While we're talking about the design, I get the feeling that the levels just get smaller and smaller as you progress in the game and that kind of bugged me because there wasn't much to explore later on like you're trapped in a small box with some newspaper clippings of Sudoku you have to solve to move on to the next small box. Maybe that's why they make you walk so agonizingly slow, because sometimes I just really wanted a run button, especially if I'm going to be running around the entire map over and over again. So that's another annoyance I had with the game, since exploration is one of the interesting aspects of Sanitarium I liked, but it gets really limited early on. But regardless, I found the story and characters to be engaging and fun to interact with, the puzzles and design to be adequate, and overall, being a really good game worth playing and experiencing, so there you go. I highly recommend getting Sanitarium, especially for $9.99 on good old games. But if you're too cheap to buy a good game like this, shame on you, then you can always watch Wiz and Hitman commentating on the game in WizWars full playthrough of it. With that said, I'm WizWar100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more. 
stay safe on Halloween. See ya! DVD.